and I'm using a series of different apps, but the one we're gonna look at today is GoodNotes, because I think it's a great place to start, especially just to get you digital and to get you guys comfortable. Does anyone have a, a smart board or have used a smart board before? Anyone ever use Smart Notebook to make any of their resources? You could take that Smart Notebook file and you could save it as a PDF file and bring it into GoodNotes or a Microsoft Word document. Save it to a PDF file, save as PDF, bring it into GoodNotes or any of the other possible programs that you may have created your resources in. Okay, so there's really no new creating that is necessary in order to get to this place. All right, for myself, I create all my, my resources in Smart Notebook. I always have. So I continue to make them in there, but then I save them as a PDF and I bring them into this GoodNotes um, app. You've got a, a huge variety of options inside the app. We'll take a look at it together in just a moment. But the big thing for me is a great way for you to write on your screen. I write on my screen with my finger, always. Most of my students use their finger as well. I have some students that bring in a stylus because they prefer to write with a stylus. Okay, so we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. A couple tools that we'll model for you in a second is the ability to zoom in on any area of the screen. Okay, so I've got a zoom box and I can make it the writing nice and clear. So that, that's kind of what it would look like as on my iPad. And finally, I could save the content out through email or through the cloud. Okay. The benefit that I really like is the fact that in the settings, and I'll show you how to do this in a second, I can actually have it synchronize all of my work automatically to my OneDrive or my Google Drive or my Dropbox so that when I, the bell rings, the kids walk out of my classroom, I could go to any computer anywhere in the world and what I just did is there, okay, available to me. So I can share that out on Twitter. I could. Uh, put it on a course website, I can, whatever I want to do with it, it is there, which is super convenient in my opinion. So when you guys come into, uh, into GoodNotes, you're going to see something similar to this, except you're going to have nothing in it because you haven't used the app before. So you're going to have basically a blank bookshelf. Um, I've got all kinds of PDFs in here. These are just, I've, I've categorized them as untitled. You'll see up here, there's a category button right there. If I give that a click, you'll see I've got a bunch of different, basically like file folders with all my different um, documents inside of them, okay? So I'm gonna jump over to my grade nine applied, for example. So here's my grade nine applied. This is what we did yesterday. And GoodNotes gives me that opportunity, that ability to very easily write on the screen very neatly from anywhere in the classroom. And I also have some other pretty cool features. Right now, I'm giving you a view mode that will allow you to see the toolbar and all the toggles and all the wonderful things here. I'll have to deal with it. So it's, it's kind of tough to see the, um, it's kind of tough to see the toolbar because of that little transparent black at the top. But you can see along the top here, I've got tons and tons of options that make it very easy for me to engage in a lesson and a very media rich lesson. And I don't really have to do any real learning here. Just a little bit of playing with the app. <laughs> yes, sir. The notes you made, uh, the finger or the in the stylus? Um, like this writing here? Yeah. That writing right there is with my finger, just like this writing is with my finger, right here. Okay, so it's all right there. It's all, um, I something else I wanna show you is this little tile button up at the top will actually show you how many pages your document has. You could do some jumping around through that little, um, that little tile paged uh, sort of page sort. If you give that plus button a tap, you're going to see a drop down menu that gives you options such as adding a page. So you can add a blank page at any time, anywhere. You could also add an image. So if you remember the great work I saw at this table over here, I could click on image, go to photos, and grab their beautiful work. So now I've got that beautiful work up on the screen and I can tell you that you've done a great job but you have missed some of the food, okay? So that's a problem. 
Now at the back, someone's going, what? What's he talking? I can zoom in too, which makes it really nice. So when we're talking about getting student work up there, being able to annotate over top of it, being able to share it out, we haven't really done much, but we're doing a lot, if you know what I mean. So in very quickly, with one app, I can take my classroom from kind of like a, you know, uh oh, I already erased that board, now it's gone, to a, no problem, I can zoom in on that for you. When I click on edit on this image, and I tap and hold, I can actually crop the image within GoodNotes. So if let's say I want to cut out some of the nonsense and I want to just get to the work I want, I could have that cropped up and we're good to go. Okay, or maybe you don't want to put it there. I want to tap and hold. I'm going to delete that image. And I'm going to add a page below of ruled paper to add something. And maybe now I'm going to add that photo. Or I'll use the camera and take the photo now. Are we ready? Wave. Hi. There we go. Use the photo. Here we are. So there you guys are. I really like the form. <laughs> Your form is great. Keep it up. All right. Um, also, we've got a shape tool over here that makes it really easy to make straight lines. It'll snap those lines for you. Or if you want to do an ellipse, or if you want to do any shape, a triangle, really makes it easy, quick, on the fly, um, which is real convenient as well. Yes. Question over here? No, so you're adding all of this to a document that already exists. Exactly. Whereas we're just opening and there's nothing there, so we can't really manipulate. Or in the PDF one, we can write all over there, help the world. Right. But right now, actually, sorry, I should have mentioned this for you. If you guys click on this plus button in GoodNotes, you can actually add a blank file, create a notebook, and you get to decide, do you want to cover? I want to make it like a, a calm cover. That doesn't look calm to me but whatever. And I could decide, do I want my paper to be ruled, square, plain, music, paper? So if I want to do some writing, I want to call it music. We want to get crazy here. I'm going to call this music. Uh, to get to another page, by the way, if you add a page, if I use one finger, you can imagine it's going to think you want to write. So that's no good. I want to use two fingers, and I'll swipe to the side. Another cool feature is if you're on the last page of a document and you swipe to the side again, you'll see a message up at the top right. Do you guys see that, the arrow? That arrow there says pull to add a page. It'll copy what the last page was. So I can add more music paper, more music paper. Now this is bad if you give your students a document and they keep doing this trying to find the end of the document because then you have the last page copied 10 times. It will happen. Do not laugh, it will happen on every single assignment. Two fingers to swipe back. So I can go back and forth between these. Nice and easy. Awesome stuff. There's also a button up at the top here. Um, it's, a, it's like a pen with a line through it. That's like, your, that's like your don't break anything button. Like if I just want to use one finger to swipe around, then it's your no pen tool. So you kind of have two options. But I, I never use that. I don't know. I'm just picky, I guess. One of my favorite tools for this is the zoom tool, which is this guy right here. If I click on that zoom tool, it will give me a big spot to write here, but it writes a whole lot smaller in the little tiny box up here. So basically all it does is it zooms in on that box so that you've got a big screen, but you can still see the entire screen. Now the advantage of this tool, as well as a couple other tools, is the option to hide this information from the student. So what I mean by that is as I'm teaching, the students never see this, this Zoom box. I'm only showing it to you because I'm teaching you how to use the Zoom box. Does that make sense? So I want to like hide this. I want the kids to only be able to see the document. I don't even want the kids to see the toolbar at the top. So what I can do is I can go and hit the back button right here and I can go to settings, or sorry, options at the bottom right, and I can hide the user interface. When I click on settings, I can go to general. See right here where it says hide user interface? 
that option will only appear when you are presenting. So right now, if you go to find it, you're not gonna see it because you're only presenting to yourself. So they, they're like, why would you wanna hide the toolbar? You're not gonna be able to do anything, right? But when I'm presenting, I turn, this option pops up because it says TV out and airplay. I'm airplaying right now. So this option appears and I can turn that button on and then watch what happens. As soon as I turn it on, it hides that I'm in the toolbar. So when I'm going back and I'm trying to get into a new document, the kids don't see me flipping around through pages going like, oh, where is it? Is it this one? Uh, is it that one? Is it that one? They don't see that. As soon as the document's pressed, they can see the, the document. So I'm just gonna make this a little larger. There we go, perfect. But notice how the toolbar is gone, right? I can turn on the zoom window now. I'm in zoom window, but you can't see it, okay? Now there's also something that appears only when you're airplane in this mode, and it's a little button with a lock on it. Do you see that little lock there? If you have awesome eyes, you might see it from over there. I'm not sure, I wouldn't be able to see it. I can barely see it in my hand. See that lock? That will only appear when I'm airplane and when I'm hiding the user interface. And what it allows me to do is it allows me to lock the screen. So I can go, let's say full picture, I'm gonna lock the screen and I can zoom in and do some writing zoomed in here, but it's not zoomed in there. Does that make sense? So what I'm doing most of the time, when I go to some math, let's actually do the math here. And uh, let's go back to, so this is the pool noodle problem. So I've got it like, fairly zoomed out for the students, I'm gonna lock the screen and I'm gonna go real close so that I can be very, very specific on what I wanna do. So if I wanna add another n squared block down here, I've got my n squared and it's nice and big for me, nice and zoomed out for them, okay? You'll notice also if I wanna pick a different pen, the toolbar is not showing. So I'm doing stuff here kind of like the commander, but they don't know what's happening. It's like I'm, at, I'm backstage doing all this stuff, okay? Now what this document or what this app allows me to do is to turn every single lesson of mine as a digital starting point. So you might argue that I'm maybe at the augmentation stage for much of the lesson when I do this, but it's what you do with the digital content afterwards that allows you to move up that SAM or left, okay? I believe that the substitution stage is a necessary starting point. You can't turn into, that would be like me going from GarageBand to Led Zeppelin overnight, right? It's kind of hard to do. Some people can do it, but it's not very realistic. So get, to, get yourself to that substitution augmentation phase so that this is in your hands every day. And guess what? If it's in your hands every day, what's gonna start happening? You're gonna start moving to different ideas. You're gonna try something. But if you don't have it in your hand, it's gonna be a whole lot harder when you go to try that first thing for the first time and it's the first time you're using an iPad in your class, you're gonna be a little nervous. The kids are gonna be like, I didn't know that the, my teacher know how to use an iPad. Like, you know, like, so you get in there, you start off nice and don't over, you know, try not to overextend yourself super, super fast. Do something simple and then you start moving up from there. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, for people who can't see it right now, I'm zoomed out. See how I'm zoomed out on the screen? If I want to go and zoom in on an area, I have to be airplane, okay? So since you guys aren't presenting, you won't be able to kind of see this button, but there's a lock that shows up. As soon as I'm presenting, my the app goes, oh, wait a second, you're presenting. Would you like to lock the screen so that you can zoom in on a pool, but the kids don't have to be zoomed? But then at other times, I would say, no, guys, I want to be zoomed in there, so I'll unlock the screen, so it'll pop to what I'm zoomed in on. Right, so guys, let's back up a second. Let's, let's go right back here. I'm going to lock the screen on there, and I'm going to zoom out, and I'm going to get myself kind of ready for the next step. I can be writing down here and kind of get things organized as the kids are doing some thinking or uh, doing some work, okay? And that, that button will only appear when you're here playing, okay? You'll notice another advantage. Maybe, maybe not. Where am I? Over there. Now that I'm comfortable with you, no one's hurt me yet, it's great. I'm usually around here when I'm teaching. And the best part about that is that you guys ask me a question that you probably wouldn't have asked if I was way up there, right? 
I don't want to bring my kid out here to look at something small. I'm here, I'm peeking over your shoulders, I know where you are at in the classroom. So even if they're writing on paper, I'm on here and I can see where everyone is. Okay, I don't know how many times I used to be up at the smart board and I move to the next page of the smart board and the whole class goes, ah, wait. <laughs> like, I know where they're at. I don't have to do that anymore. I could be walking around and I go, okay, there are three people in this class that are not where they need to be. I can be there and I can help them out. Or does anyone have Johnny, Johnny on the spot in their class? Yeah. You know the kid, you know the guy. He's at the back and he's like, well, I'm not doing anything. No, exactly, you're not doing anything. So I'm gonna stand with you. <laughs> and then guess what? Johnny does stuff. It's, it's crazy how that happens. So um, I even do it. It's great. You guys are so respectful, by the way. But what I'll do, this little conversation, usually I wait for like a table that's like clearly like just talking amongst itself, not really like they're, they're you know, they're, they don't even know what's going on around them. And I come over here and all of a sudden the entire table quiets. And then I say, did you guys see what happened? The rest of the room left.